Welcome to Tech Transformation with CGT and RIS News. I'm Lisa Johnson, the Editor-in-Chief of CGT. In Tech Transformation, we talk about the innovative strategies and trends in retail and consumer goods. In this episode, we're going to talk about real-time feedback. So with me today is Steve Peltzman, Chief Business and Technology Officer at Forrester. So Steve, welcome. Hey, how are you? Nice to, nice to be here. Thank you. Wonderful to have you here. Uh, can you give us like the 30 second background on yourself? Sure. I have an uh, eclectic background. Um, I was in the uh, Air Force for seven years uh, as an officer working on uh, stealth aircraft. Uh, then uh, business school. Then um, I spent 10 years as the head of technology for the Museum of Modern Art in New York. Uh, and uh, it, we did have a big uh, retail uh, operation there. And then uh, from there, I moved over to run technology at Forrester Research. And at Forrester Research, uh, we, we do research on marketing and technology and customer experience. And we ended up acquiring a company called Feedback Now uh, about four years ago. And uh, about two years ago, or actually three years ago, um, I stepped out of my technology role and. Um, and took over running Feedback Now, kind of like as a business, a separate business from Forrester. And we've been doing that since pretty much the pandemic started. Uh, so we're, you, have, you do have an eclectic background, and we're going to talk about other industries in a little bit. So I'll, I'll be curious to know if you pull from those industries at all for, for your responses. Um, but to start us out now, I'd love to start out with a definition of real-time feedback as it pertains to retail and CPG, because, because you know we know it can mean a lot sure. of different things. So what does this look like? Sure. I think, um, you know, first I'll say what it isn't, which a lot of we've encountered a lot of uh, companies and clients who say, oh, yeah, real time feedback. We do that. Um, we give surveys right after, uh, you know, they have the experience or, you know, we ask them on their way out. And that's not that's close, but it's not real time feedback. We, we define it as real time signals, not always from customers necessarily, but real time signals from from people, which could be. Could, could be customers, it could be non-customers, people who, who browse but don't buy, it could be staff, um, it could be all any type of, of person who's involved in the operation, some people, processes, things like um, inventory levels, wait times, um, opening new lines, things like that. Uh, and um, lastly, places, and that could be things like um, uh, how many people are in a particular store or what the temperature is or anything like that, noise levels, cars in the parking lot, traffic leading up to the store, things like that. Um, so it's taking all those signals and, um, and it's not just data. I think to me, it, there's real-time feedback and then there's real-time feedback operations. And that's when you recreate your uh, operations, your customer service operations around those signals to react and adapt to those signals. And I can talk about that more as well. Yeah, that's interesting that you say, you know, it, it, it's not data. Um, do you find that, you know, in dealing with people who think that they are doing real-time feedback, that they're often getting the two con misconstrued? Yeah, because I think everyone has been used to um, surveys forever. Um Surveys is this great, and, and it's the marketer's dream, right? You know, I know exactly who you are. I know what age you are, what gender you are, you know, what you came. But there's, and, and not to knock surveys, they're, they're deep, they're contextual, they're a needed part of the process. Mm -hmm. But for whatever reason, um, maybe just limitations in technology or, or limitations in what you could do in operations, people focused on that as the basis of of creating a, a factory floor, if you will, of customer service operations. So I'm going to have a play a plays. I'm going to know how to um, run my operation. And then I'm going to do surveys. I'm going to collect that data and I'm going to go, hmm, what's wrong with that? And I'm going to crack it. But that, you can see that's like a weeks, months, years type of operation. Uh, then there was like this next level of like, uh, okay, well, we'll ask people uh, – in the store or on their way out, and then we'll try to change that during the week. Well, that's nice, but that's a daily, weekly. Whereas this is about taking all those sensors, those uh, signals that I talked about before, and then putting them in, in analytics and then figuring out exactly how to run your operations. So an example might be 
Um, I was going to say, can you tell us like this all sudden, yeah. like, why is this good? Why is this a benefit? And, you know, sure. can you give us an example of, of um, where this a works? A great example. One of our, one of our best customers is, is super obsessed. They're a convenience store, you know, roadside stop kind of store, and they have 600 locations. They're centrally owned and they are absolutely obsessed. They think that the differentiator for uh, going to their store, their, their, whether it's the restaurant, whether it's the restroom, whether it's whatever is um, cleanliness and service. So they've, they're completely obsessed. They have our people counters in the ceiling. So in front of every major facility, whether it's a restroom or, you know, a rest area or whatever, they have um, green, yellow, and red, you know, how was your experience? How was the cleanliness in this restroom or how was any kind of question? And then they've got, um, our solution for checking in and checking out the service so they know when people are servicing it. And the operation that they do is fully real time. They don't do surveys and go, hmm, we should, you know, we should visit this uh, three times a day. What they do is they figure out very quickly that after X people use this facility in Y minutes, that's when the reds start to accumulate. So we're going to go right behind X. We're going to send alerts we're going to watch the number of people, not watch but with a camera, but, you know, counter the number of people who are going into the facility and then figure out right before that X number, that's when we send somebody. And then we're going to track, make sure that they do actually show up and how long they take to clean the facility and leave. And then they look at the red, green, yellow constantly to see if they have to adjust that. So that is a real time customer experience operation. There's nothing. The whole operation is designed uh, around that real time signal of who's coming when and um, and how often they should um, uh, therefore clean. And that and then there's other factors too, like if it's snowing outside and people are tracking in, you know, uh, snow and sludge from their shoes, well, that number could, you know, that X within Y minutes could shorten. Or if there's a lot of traffic and they're upset. Uh, another example is airports and security lines. Um, you can very quickly tell by putting a red, green, yellow at the end of the line and measuring the wait time that the average wait time, you know, when it's two minutes or three minutes to go through security, everyone's pretty okay. When it's 20 minutes, 25 minutes, everyone's pretty upset. But somewhere between those is like a, a number where everyone feeds off each other and everyone gets upset at the same time. And that's right before that is the trigger to open up new lines. It doesn't always happen with TSA and everything. But that's the operation they're trying to push. And of course, that could be affected by traffic to the airport. If everyone shows up 10 minutes later than they expected to, they're more anxious. The average, you know. So you can see there's a lot of complications here, but the, 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 the tying thread is not waiting for a survey to figure out your operations, but actually acting in the moment based on those sensors that are signals that are coming in. So why is this hard for companies to do? I mean, companies are drawing in data from all over the place. We know this, that companies have lots of data. Um, it's really sifting through it, making it actionable. That's a challenge for them. Um, so, you know, what's your take on, on what's holding them back? And there, there's, a, there's a bunch of things. Um, I think from a, from a big picture point of view, um, mo a lot of organizations have a customer analytics group or a marketing group where they're looking at this data, they they're the ones who traditionally look at surveys and then they talk to the operations people. But what I'm describing requires those two to be lockstep. So the operations people have to be totally bought in. Um, that that example I, I talked about earlier with um, with the roadside um, with with the road with the rest stop uh, company. They're centrally owned, so it was a CEO mandate. Very easy to to link up operations and and customer analytics. But in a lot of organizations, they're separate. So the customer analytics person loves the idea of real time feedback, but the operations people they have to they would have to rebuild their I call it factory floor, uh, and that's a you know that's a big thing to do. I think there's there's other Forrester research. We actually asked them to do research on this very topic. Um, and I won't bore you with the numbers, but they came back and the biggest trends were a, a lot of them don't have the resources to, um, to put something like this in place. And by resources, I mean not necessarily the number of people to run around and do it on the floor, but the resources to analyze and figure out how to, um, 
how to actually rewire their factory floor. So how do you, if you're a supermarket, uh, how do you roll out the idea that we're not just going to open new lines? You know, this, you ever walk into a supermarket and there's like 18 registers and three are open and everyone's upset. So how do you, how do you create an operation across your, you know, 85 supermarkets where I'm not going to wait until everyone's pissed off to open a new line. I'm going to count the number of people in, I'm going to figure out the relation and I'm just going to open the lines automatically when the number of people in the store, you know, hits a certain amount. That's a, that's a big thing to roll out. It's a, there, there's a emotional barrier and, but there's also like an analytical. It's one of those sounds easier said than done than moments. I'm sure. Yeah. 